Good afternoon dear students. Welcome to the next session of uh, lesson 5. Yesterday what we discussed let us recall. Yesterday we discussed about the location of Europe. So once again you see the location of the Europe. The location of Europe. This is east. Right hand, right hand side will be east. Okay. So now we are writing the directions. Now we are writing the directions of Europe. And to the left of Europe, we have west. It's a west direction. And uh, to the top, it is north. And to the bottom, it is south. Directions. Directions of Europe. Okay, if you see the map also, it is the directions of Europe. Right hand side will be east, left will be west. Top is north and bottom is south. Now let us see. On the east, which ocean is located? Is it ocean? Yes, right. It's not ocean. Here on the east, we have Ural Mountains. It is like a boundary. Ural Mountains. To the east side, it is like a boundary. Ural Mountains. And to the west, what we have? Now here, we have Atlantic Ocean. You can observe even the map once again. On the west, it is Atlantic Ocean and on the north, what we have? The Arctic Ocean. Yes, very good students. I think so you all have remembered. And to the south, what we have and even we discussed it that that is the middle of the world. The Europeans, they call it as the middle of the world. So what is there to the south? Yes, very good students. To the south, we have Mediterranean Sea. Mediterranean Sea. To the south. It is Mediterranean Sea. So this is about the location of Europe. Already yesterday we discussed about the location of Europe. Just I am recalling. Okay. So to the east of Europe what we have. So these are all the boundaries of Europe. So these are all the boundaries of Europe. What are these all? It is the boundaries of Europe. So boundaries on the east. There are Ural Mountains. On the west, there is Atlantic Ocean and to the north, Arctic Ocean and to the south, Mediterranean Sea. Okay, so these are the boundaries of Europe. And even as we discussed, the Europeans, they call Mediterranean Sea as the middle of the world, I said yesterday. Isn't it students? Yes. So, why they call it so? Why they call it as a Mediterranean Sea? Because... The Europeans they did not know about other countries like Africa, Australia, America. They knew only about the northern part of Africa which is just down of Mediterranean Sea. There is Africa if you observe the map. Already you can observe the map in page 42. Okay. So, so down of Mediterranean Sea in the world map there is Africa. What it is? Africa, the down of Mediterranean Sea, there is a Africa. You can observe the world map here. So, down of Mediterranean Sea is the Africa. So, they know, they knew only about the north part of Africa and they knew only about the east side and that is west to the Asia. Only they know about, they knew about these two regions and next two regions is Atlantic Ocean and Arctic Ocean. So, they thought this is in the middle of the world because they don't know about the other countries of the world. That's why they call the Mediterranean Sea as the middle of the world. Even now also. Now they know about all the countries of the world. Isn't it? Strange? Even though they call even now also Mediterranean Sea as the middle of the world. Okay. This is a recapitulation students. And uh, today the page 42 and 43 I will post you and uh, I have underlined some of the important points and uh, uh, even I have written some of the answers for the uh, given in the box. These all you have to complete it students. Okay. So now let us go today and even what I said you observe now this uh, world map. So in this world map you can see the Asia and Europe is a continuous landmass. It's a continuous landmass. So together this Europe and Asia called as Eurasia students. Okay, now let us go into the today's topic. Yesterday I taught you this much only. Okay, students, now let us go to the topic. Now let us learn about the mountains 
plains and rivers of uh, Europe. Okay, the plains, mountains and Europe of, see, alright, mountains, okay, comma, plains and rivers. Now, let us today discuss about this two, three topics, okay. So, these are the what, mountains. Plains and rivers, landforms. Yes, very good. And even it's called as a relief features also, students. Okay. So, mountains, plains and rivers. Let us see. Let us learn more about the mountains of, mountains, plains and rivers of Europe. Okay. With the help of the map. Now, you observe this map. You observe this map. In this map, you can see uh, in brown color, these are the mountains and all Purple color, it's a water bodies. So, which river is starts where and it flows into which you see very clearly given in this map, students. Have you observed the map? Yes. So, in this map, you can see, you can see many of the mountains which colored in brown. And these mountains, most of the mountains in Europe covered with snow. They are all several mountains are snow covered mountains. Now, you observe this map and you can see the mountain Alps. You can see the mountain Alps. And even you can see Pyrenees. You can see even the mountains Pyrenees. Okay, the Alps and the Pyrenees. These two mountains you can see. And the Alps, the Alps, the most important mountain ranges of Europe. The Alps is the most important mountain ranges. Most important. Most important mountain ranges of. So, among all the mountains, Alps is the most important mountain ranges of Europe. And it is covered with snow all year round. It's covered with snow all year round. That's why I think so. it is most important. Many mountains are there. Isn't it? Alps, Pyrenees, okay, and uh, Caucasian, U Ural Mountains, but the Alps is the most important mountain ranges and uh, it is covered with snow all year round. All year round it is covered with snow. Okay, and uh, the Caucasian Mountains which lie between the Caspian, you can observe this map. In this map you can see Caucasian Mountains showing. So, this Caucasian mountains between, it's lying between the Caspian Sea and the Black Sea. So, in between the Caspian Sea and Black Sea. And uh, this uh, forms the southern boundary of Europe. What forms the southern boundary of Europe? Caucasian mountains. Where it is situated? It is situated to the south of Europe and in between the Caspian Sea and the Black Sea. So, it is on the south, it forms a southern boundary of Europe. And these mountains also very high and it's covered with snow all year round students. Not only the Alps, but even which mountain? Caucasian mountain. Caucasian mountains also covered with snow all year round. Okay, have you understood up to here? Shall I repeat once again? Now let us learn about more about the mountains, plains and rivers in this lesson. So just we have started about the mountains. Okay. So in this, you, know, you already observed the map and even if you want, you can observe in page number 46, there is a map, physical map. So in that map, uh, the map shows about the mountains and rivers. So in this map, you can see the Alps mountains. These mountains are most important mountains in of Europe. And it is covered with snow all year round. In the same way, there is a Caucasian mountains on the south of Europe. And these Caucasian mountains are located between the Caspian Sea and the Black Sea. Okay. Now, there is a lot of difference between, already we discussed it, that Europe and Asia is a continuous landmass. Together called Eurasia. And but you know there is a lot of difference between Asia and Europe. 
See how surprising. See Europe and Asia together called as a Eurasia. It's continuous landmass. But even though there is a lot of difference between Asia and Europe. What is a lot of difference? Let us see. We can see many plateaus in Asia. So we can see many plateaus. What is a plateaus? What is the definition of plateaus? Have you already studied in 6th class? The table and the flat. Isn't it? So, the plateaus. We see many plateaus in Asia. Okay. Uh, but uh, there are no large plateaus in Europe. This is a difference. If they ask what is the difference between Asia and Europe, students, the question, question given, you can answer that. We can see many plateaus in Asia. But there are no large plateaus in Europe. And there are only some small plateaus in France. So we have some plateaus. In which regions we have plateaus? You observe the map. Now in this map you see. the There are only some plateaus in France. Where is France? You observe in the map. France, Germany and Spain. So there are only some small plateaus in France. France, Germany and Spain. What we discussed? In many plateaus in Asia. But there are only some plateaus in Europe. And that to do in which region? In which countries of Europe? In France, Germany and Spain. In these three countries we can see some small plateaus. Okay. And uh, Eastern Europe. So what we have on the eastern part of Europe already we discussed about the location of Europe. Isn't it students? So in that location see Europe once again I write to remind you east what we have Ural Mountains and to the west we have Atlantic Ocean to the north we have Arctic Ocean and to the south what we have what we have Mediterranean Sea. Okay if we see to the east of Europe what we have east of Europe actually Ural Mountains. So East Europe is a vast plain. After, after the Ural Mountains we have plains. Vast means very big. Vast plains which stretches, which continues from which countries. It across from which countries. The countries like now observe map. In this map you can see Russia. Ukraine, Poland, Belarusia. Okay. See in this map you can see two in two places given Russia, isn't it? So in that the down one which is given that is Belarusia, Belarus they call. Okay. These plains experience heavy snowfall. So eastern side whichever the vast plains are there, these plains experiences what? It experiences. Heavy snowfall. It experiences heavy snowfall and bitter winter students. Bitter cold in winter. So the eastern part of plains experiences heavy snowfall and bitter colds. Bitter means what? Unbearable. Bitter. Very bitter cold in winters. See we call uh, bitter God, isn't it? We cannot eat. In the same way here, winter also very, very severe. So, on the eastern part of Europe, the, the experiences heavy snowfall and bitter cold in winters. So, I think so. If we go, we cannot bear. Now, when the snow melts, now already in the winter season, heavy snowfall, but what happens to this snowfall? So, in the summer season, this uh, Snow melts. The snow which ha snowfall will be there in the winter. When it enters into the summer season, the snow melts and slowly this flow start flowing as a small streams. This flow as a small streams. And these small streams, this small streams joins to the Mighty river. Mighty meaning what students? Underline this word mighty word. Mighty means very large. Mighty means what? Very large. So in summer season the snow will melt 
and it flows in the form of small streams and this small tree streams joins to the mighty rivers mighty means what very large rivers it is from these plains that rivers like neper and the volga so from the small streams it joins a mighty river and here the rivers like neper and volga the longest river in europe originates okay they join the mighty rivers it is from the from these plains that rivers like neper and the volga so here in the europe the longest rivers are there neper and volga neper and the volga is the longest river okay so from these plains the rivers like neper and volga neper and volga and longest river volga is the longest river of europe volga is the longest river of europe originate okay okay neper and the volga and volga is the longest river in europe and these rivers originate here where with the small streams comes and join to the mighty river okay and it is from these plains from which plains already we are discussing about the eastern part of plains okay so in these plains only this uh, the rivers like neper and the volga volga is the longest river in europe and these two rivers originate from these plains which plains eastern part of plains okay now european rivers are see already first we discussed about the mountains under that mountains we discussed about the alps we discussed about the caucasian mountains which is uh, the southern boundary okay students and uh, these uh, mountains covered with snow all year round all year round it's covered with snow then we discussed about the plains where are the vast plains situated to the eastern part of europe there are the vast plains okay and uh, these vast plains it passes means it stretches uh, across several countries like russia ukraine poland belarusia and these uh, eastern part this eastern plains it experiences what i said snowfall and bitter cold in winter and uh, even in the eastern plains the river uh, in the summer season the snow melts and it uh, slowly flows like a small streams and joins to the mighty river mighty meaning what i said large river large very large and uh, the rivers like neper and volga and volga is the longest river in europe this two rivers originates from eastern plains it originates from eastern plains okay now european rivers are used not only for irrigating the fields so the rivers which are in europe now we are discussing about the rivers of europe so the rivers of europe not only used for irrigation means irrigating fields but also you know as waterways they also use as a waterways the rivers not only used for irrigating fields but also its use as waterways also students you know europeans from the ancient time they are using the waterways okay then so as major waterways so ships on these rivers so they not only they use rivers for irrigating fields but they use waterways for transportation so through the ships big barrage plies like that they will use waterways okay students and uh, they will transport through this waterways the people and goods they transport the people through the waterways they transport the people and goods goods means what yeah whatever uh, goods means maybe the metals maybe anything whatever they products they prepared 
clothes whatever they produce uh, produce means growing ah uh, yes produce or if they manufacture in the factories whatever they will export to other countries okay that are goods okay and uh, since this rivers flow across several countries they also facilitate so it's not only uh, they can travel within their country but even they can travel to the other countries so they will uh, international it is called international so they can travel to other countries also and they trade also trading means what selling their goods and buying the goods trade business actually trade means business okay so because these rivers flow across different countries so they also facilitate international trade and transport so not only the people even the goods to different countries also they will transport okay so in this respect the rhine is the one of the most important rivers as it flows through several countries as it flows through the several countries so how the rivers about uh, nipper and volga we have discussed so the nipper and volga it originates in the eastern plains in the same way there is the rhine rhine is one of the most important rivers and it flows through the several many countries and it will empty itself in the you observe the map empty itself in the in the north sea where is north sea now you observe the north sea yes you can see the north sea in between the scandinavian ranges and pipnine ranges so students this is our end of the session now i would like to ask you the few slot questions then i will end my session okay first question let us see name the boundaries of europe again i will post name the boundaries of europe which sea is called the middle of the world which two countries are known as eurasia name the important mountain ranges of europe name any two rivers flows through europe in what ways rivers are useful in europe see all one word answers only one or two other uh, little three four lines answer i will post it you have to learn okay students this is a slot wise question and answers so slot one slot two questions i have given now you all learn this is only for learning i'll post you okay thank you have a nice day